Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis of ganoaplanin. This work was published in JAX by the Maguire Group in their paper, Total Synthesis of Ganoplanin, enabled by a radical addition aldol reaction cascade. Ganoplanin was first isolated by Chu in racemic form from the fungus Ganoderma aplanatum in 2016. This compound is a member of the Ganoderma myroterpenoids, a large class of natural products including cochlearal B and lucidamone, two compounds that we've previously seen on this channel before. The initial studies into the bioactivity of ganoplanin B has shown that the racemic mixture inhibits T-type voltage-gated calcium channels with an IC50 of 36.6 micromolar. This suggests that it has potential as a lead compound for the development of novel therapeutics against neurodegenerative diseases. The structure of the molecule is quite interesting as it possesses two distinct fragments. It has an aromatic moiety derived from hydroquinone which is appended to a terpene-derived scaffold. This junction takes the form of a spirocyclic bis-acetal and contains two of the five stereocenters present in the molecule. The northern fragment is comprised of a 6666 tetracyclic tetraorthosubstituted biaryl motif and this is connected through the bis-acetal system. To install the stereochemistry, they would use a chelation controlled cyclization and the bis-acetylization step would be done under thermodynamic control to favour one isomer. This reaction could be done as a cascade. The first step would be triggered by a reduction, generating a hydroxyl group that could undergo intramolecular attack to a ketone to form a hemiacetal. In the second step of the cascade, this hemiacetal would undergo another intramolecular addition, forming the spirobisacetal linkage. The aromatic fragment, on the other hand, would be formed using a radical cyclization, followed by an aldol addition. So let's dive into the synthesis. The first reaction of the synthesis was an ozaki hiyama kishi coupling. Nickel zero first undergoes oxidative addition into an alkenyl iodide, and this then undergoes transmetallation with a chromium 3 species. The nickel 2 species that is produced is then reduced by a reaction with chromium 2. Meanwhile, the organochromium species that is generated undergoes nucleophilic addition into an aldehyde, generating a chromium oxide species. This was then silated in situ using TBS chloride, DMAP and imidazole to produce the target compound in a 57% yield. Taking this forward, it was then subject to a cyclization lactinization sequence. This was carried out by reacting it with titanium terbutoxide, copper oxide and an excess of iodine. The titanium coordinates the two ester groups, promoting the formation of an enolate and adding conformational rigidity to the system. The alkene is activated by the iodine, forming an iodinium intermediate that undergoes an intramolecular 5 exotrig cyclization to form the 5 membered ring. This is then followed by a lactinization reaction, most likely triggered by the attack of iodide on the methyl ester, leading to an intramolecular nucleophilic attack to form the lactone in a 67% yield as a single diastereomer. This stereoselectivity is thought to be driven by the conformation of the TBS group adjacent to the alkene. When this forms the chair like transition state, it can adopt a conformation where it is either axial or equatorial and this changes its electronic interactions with the alkene. When it is in the equatorial conformation, there is overlap between the filled pi bond of the alkene and the sigma star antibonding orbital of the carbon-oxygen bond. This overlap lowers the energy of the alkene and destabilizes the transition state, making it less reactive. Therefore, by carrying out this reaction under kinetic conditions, they could selectively favor the reaction pathway where the TBS group is in the axial conformation, leading to the product with the desired stereochemistry. This product was then taken forward to a Craptro decarboxylation. The reaction is carried out in wet DMSO and lithium, present as lithium chloride, first coordinates between the two ester groups. This increases the electrophilicity and allows chloride to act as a nucleophile to attack the methyl ester. This triggers the expulsion of carbon dioxide, which is lost as a gas, together with methyl chloride. This forms an enolate that is then protonated by water, present in the DMSO forming the target compound in an 87% yield. In the next reaction, an enolate was once again formed at this position, this time using lithium HMDS. This then attacked allyl iodide to form the product in a 90% yield. 
with this alkene in place, it was then subject to an ozonolysis reaction. Ozone first undergoes a 3 plus 2 cycloaddition to the alkene, forming a trioxalane ring that then undergoes cycloreversion and recombination to form a malozonide. This then reacts with triphenylphosphine, which reduces it to form an aldehyde and completes the synthesis of fragment 1 in an 85% yield. To synthesize fragment 2, they started with a hydroxyiodobenzoic acid compound. This underwent a one pot mom protection esterification reaction. The molecule is first deprotonated with sodium hydride, and the resulting phenylate and carboxylate attack mom bromide, installing the mom groups. The mom ester is highly activated as an electrophile, and this is then attacked by bromide. This forms an activated acyl bromide upon the elimination of formaldehyde and methoxide. The methoxide then acts as a nucleophile to displace the bromide and form the methyl ester. This ester was then reduced using dibal in the next step. The aluminium first coordinates to the ester, making it more electrophilic and allowing for the delivery of a hydride to form a tetrahedral intermediate. The tetrahedral intermediate then eliminates methoxide to form an aldehyde. This then reacts with another equivalent to dibal to form a primary alcohol in a 71% yield over two steps. This alcohol could then be converted to a bromide using mesyl chloride and potassium bromide. Mesyl chloride is first deprotonated by triethylamine to eliminate chloride and form a sulfine species. This highly reactive intermediate is then attacked by the hydroxyl group and a proton transfer yields a mesylated compound. This mesyl group can then be displaced by bromide, forming the target compound in a 70% yield. In the next reaction, dihydroxyquinone was first deprotonated with potassium carbonate and the resulting phenylate then displaces the bromide, forming an ether linkage in a 79% yield. The remaining hydroxyl group was then oxidized in the next reaction. This was done by reacting it with phenyliodine diacetate, which displaces an equivalent of acetic acid and activates the aromatic ring towards nucleophilic addition. Methanol, present as a solvent, attacks at the power position to displace the iodine species and form the target quinone acetal in an 82% yield. With this in place, it was then set up for the critical radical cyclization aldol addition cascade. Triethyl borane first reacts with atmospheric oxygen to produce a boron peroxide together with an ethyl radical. This can abstract a hydrogen radical from tributyl tin hydride to form a tin radical that then reacts with the aromatic iodide. This produces a radical that then undergoes conjugate addition into the quinone system, which is activated by coordination to triethyl borane. This eliminates another equivalent of ethyl radical, which continues the reaction cascade. Meanwhile, the enolate formed by this intramolecular addition then undergoes an aldol addition into the aldehyde of fragment 1, forming the target compound in an 81% yield. Taking this forward, the hydroxyl group was oxidized using desmartin periodinane. This is attacked by the hydroxyl group, displacing an equivalent of acetate. This then acts as a base to deprotonate the molecule and form the carbonyl. This reaction was worked up and the crude material was taken forward without purification and subject to an aromatization reaction. While this transformation could be completed by reacting it with PTSA, this proved to be low yielding and difficult to reproduce. They discovered that by first reacting it with DBU, they could then reliably carry out the reaction with a 49% yield over three steps. They propose that the DBU promotes an epimerization reaction and one of these epimers is more susceptible to the aromatization reaction. With this in hand, the benzyl group could be deprotected using catalytic hydrogenation and the more acidic phenol could be selectively protected by deprotonating it with triethylamine and reacting it with acetic anhydride. DMP was then employed once again, this time to oxidize the primary hydroxyl group, forming the target aldehyde in a 99% yield. In the next step, the MOM group was deprotected using TMS bromide. The phenolic oxygen attacks TMS bromide, and this triggers the cleavage of the MOM group, producing a silyl ether. This is cleaved upon workup to generate the free phenol in a 74% yield. In the next step, the TBS group was removed using HF and pyridine, and then the phenol was oxidized to a quinone. This was done using bis trifluoroacetoxyiodobenzene. This reacts in a similar manner to the PIDA which we saw earlier. The hydroxyl group attacks the iodine 
and this displaces trifluoroacetate. With the ring now electrophilically activated, water then attacks at the power position, and the PIFA byproduct is eliminated. Further reaction with another equivalent of PIFA oxidizes the hydroxyl group, forming the quinone. This could be taken forward without purification and subject to a spiral bisacetylization reaction. Reacting the compound with sodium dithionite reduces the quinone, and the resulting hydroxyl group then undergoes an intramolecular addition into the ketone. The oxygen of this ketone then participates in another acetylization reaction, this time adding to the aldehyde to produce a single diastereomer. The reaction was then worked up, and the crude product was subject to an acetylization reaction using PTSA in methanol with trimethyl orthoformate as a dehydration reagent. The acid activates the hydroxyl group, and this is then eliminated as water, allowing methanol to then attack as a nucleophile to form the methyl acetal with a 53% yield over three steps. Trimethyl orthoformate is present in the reaction to sequester water, which drives it to completion. This is activated by the PTSA, eliminating methanol, and the highly electrophilic intermediate can be attacked by the water that is produced. This then breaks down to eliminate methyl formate and another equivalent of methanol, destroying the water present in the reaction, ensuring that it cannot hydrolyze the acetal product. The remarkable stereoselectivity of this reaction is attributed to the anomeric effects exhibited by the bis-acetal system. The anomeric effect is stabilization that occurs due to the hyperconjugation between the filled lone pairs on the oxygen and the sigma star antibonding orbital of the carbon-oxygen bond. If the reaction is carried out under thermodynamic control, where the acetylization is reversible, the product formed will favor the diastereomer with the greatest anomeric stabilization. With the bis-acetal now in place, the phenol is protected as an acetate in a 76% yield, and the molecule could then be subject to a benzylic oxidation. Terpbutyl hydrogen peroxide first reacts with copper 1 chloride, generating a peroxy radical. This abstracts the hydrogen from the benzylic position, generating a radical that is stabilized by hyperconjugation with the aromatic ring. From here, there are two possible pathways that this reaction can take. Another equivalent of the terpbutyl peroxide radical can attack this position to generate a peroxy acetal that is then oxidized to the ester by reaction with the copper salt. In the other reaction pathway, the molecule can react with atmospheric oxygen, and this radical intermediate can abstract a hydrogen atom from another equivalent of the substrate. As with pathway A, this peroxy radical can also be oxidized by reaction with the copper salt, forming the target product in a 47% yield. With the lactone now in place, the synthesis was completed by a simple deprotection of the acetate groups using potassium carbonate and methanol to produce the target ganoplanin in a 95% yield. Well that's all for this week. Join me in the next video where we will look at the total synthesis of scabrolide B.